My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Moss. Got you. What you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300-pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. That's the one. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Welcome to San Diego in December, buddy. First time. Yeah, we get these Santa Ana days where the wind blows off the land and really warms things up. Perfect time to go do one of my favorite things. And what's that? Catch rock fish. <laughs> um, it's just like your bottom fish. Some days it's on fire, some days you gotta work for it. But if you put in enough time, you get a box full of fish. Right. I think you're gonna like the end result. You know what rockfish turn into. Yeah, you know, you know what I want. <laughs> rockfish tacos. Even though me and Ali grew up across the country from each other. We both grew up in two totally similar cities. Yes, yeah, San Diego is a lot bigger of a city than Key West, but you know, we have a lot of the same similarities and the biggest similarity is the water. You know, when a lot of people think about Southern California, you know, you think about beaches and palm trees and all that. I mean, our culture is really built around the ocean. Surfing, has always been a big part of our culture here. And in the same way, you know, ocean sports and fishing has been a huge part of our culture. How about some 50? That's fine. You know, when you think about San Diego, California, the reason I'm here is really because this is a Navy town. But before this was a Navy town, it was a commercial fishing town. This was Tuna Town, USA. You know, Starkist was here. And a lot of those other brands that you recognize from fish products were born and raised here in Southern California. All right, what are you tying on there? I'm gonna put uh, one of these jigs on here. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's something I wanted to try on that lighter setup. Yep, I think we'll start with bait, you know, just to see what's biting. And okay. Then we can try goofing around with some of this different stuff and see how it works compared. I got a bunch of gulp too. You know, I love those big gulps for my rockfish. You know, anytime that we do leave the dock, we might be targeting a species or a type of fish, bottom fish, surface fish, whatever that may be. But there's always a plan. I always have an agenda. Now are we gonna be bouncing around a bunch or yeah, just yeah, kind of staying is, in one uh, area? This is different than your bottom fishing. We move around until we find one that's really biting. You seem like you manufacture bites. It's so deep here, it's just really not an option. Going and getting some squid to go rock fishing or maybe going and grabbing a pack of flying fish. I mean, before you even leave, you're already prepping for that trip. Now, what do you find them to bite more on? The jigs, the bait? It's day to day. Day to day. Some days they want one, some days they want the other. That's why we always try to mix it up. This area we're fishing here, we catch a good bit of sheep's head in. So I really wanted to try some squid. If you know me, if you fished with me, if you grew up with me, you pretty much know I'm no stranger to bottom fishing. It's a big part of what I do on a daily basis. I have a lot of customers, they love to do it. And it's one of the fisheries that I really enjoy. How deep are we? Shallow, 189. One of the greatest things about rock fishing, other than them being delicious, is it's super low key. You go out, you could grab a handful of gulps, a few live baits, squid, and a couple metal jigs, and have yourself a fantastic day. Getting some packs. That's not what we want. No. That's those whitefish picking apart your squid. Now the whitefish live right on the bottom. Everything pretty much does. You know, when they're spawning, they'll start to come up off the bottom, but for the most part, yeah, everything's tight to the bottom. Got a little something here. Let's white fish white right there fish. these guys have got the sharpest gills in the business like snook gills look like a tile fish it, it's a cousin to the tile fish and they love that squid these lower spots right here got a lot of these on them one this size we'll keep they're good eating really yeah the other cool thing is you know there's no anchoring involved you're drifting over patches of hard bottoms, a little bit of structure. There's not a whole lot you're gonna get hung up in. 
you're bouncing around, just catching a few fish here and there, enjoying the day. Looks like I got a white fish and a rock fish. Did ya? Doubled up. So you say be careful with these white fish, huh? Yeah, watch the back gill. It's not like a snapper. Giant rock fish too, look at you. You know what I do. That's a good white fish, dude. <laughs> They're really, really good firm meat, like a tile fish. So I got a little bit of a plan here, Rutchie. We're gonna get a nice box of these fish going. We don't need a ton, you know, just a handful. We'll get some nice reds and stuff like that. And then uh, tomorrow night, we'll go do some hoop netting. Totally interested to see that lobster fishery. I mean, I was checking out some of the hoop nets in the uh, tackle shop this morning when yep. I was getting my license and stuff. And it looks really cool. It's, you just don't know what's gonna come up in the net, you know? And you go home with a bunch of delicious lobsters. We'll send you guys home with some tails That'll too. That'll be cool, man. That'll be You'll awesome. Like I really like them. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Mercury, Go Boldly, Penn, Let the Battle Begin, Yeti, Built for the Wild, Seakeeper, Once you feel it, you'll never boat without it, Bubba, The Ultimate Lifestyle, Seagar, The Inventor and Perfector of Fluorocarbon Fishing Lines, Nomad Design, Crafted by Experience, and by bdoutdoors.com. Not so much bait here, Rush. More, uh... Just trying to get, get some good strush, it's not covered in that little bait, you know? One of the greatest things about rock fishing, literally, you're pulling up to a spot that you know has held them before or where they live. You're gonna tie on whatever you want. It could be a Carolina rig, it could be a dropper loop. You could have some flat falls ready to go. Some slow pitch jigs work really well. A few pieces of squid, some gulp. Oh, it's a big one. I'd say this is at least a taco and a half right here. A little cilantro, some cheese. All the good ingredients. Oh yeah, look at this taco, baby. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's a sculpin. Don't grab it. You can grab him by the lip like a bass, but don't touch the spikes on his head. Are they poisonous? Oh yeah, very. I like to get the danger part out of the way early. Like you don't even see where they would be poisonous. See the like, normal like spines on his head? Yeah. Those are poisonous. The ones on his back are poisonous. And there's a beer named after this guy too, right? Yeah, I think you met a couple of those last night, didn't you? Yeah, it, it poisoned me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be a huge bite by any means, but you're gonna feel the bite and you're just basically grocery shopping, bringing in different species of fish. Got a floater here. It's a floater, it's a rockfish. Little guy, it's a Boccaccio. You know, bottom fishing is bottom fishing wherever you go. The characters are a little bit different, but generally the techniques are pretty much the same. Rush, this is a different one here. This is a copper rockfish. We call them chuckleheads. A little better uh, quality too, huh? Yeah, that's a smallish one. I mean, he's a keeper. He's what, pound and a half, maybe two pounds. But look at the coloring on him, man. Beautiful. Pretty much anywhere you go, it's the fishery is the same. Cut bait, jigs, whatever. It's just a matter of regional species that separates the way that we all bottom fish. What's the biggest a rockfish will get? Probably the Boccaccio. Those guys will get 16, 18 pounds. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, cow cod would be the biggest. They get over 30. You know, we do so much rock fishing, we like to mix it up. In this case, like, goal number one, get delicious taco meat. So I'm gonna go with the tried and true. And for me, the tried and true is live sardines, Berkeley gulp, and some squid. Same Little one you just caught, huh? So we start off our day, you know, fishing that. Oh yeah, look at this one. That's what we're after. Remember I told you those bigger chuckleheads will kind of pull like a grouper, right? Right. Trying to rock you. Ask and you shall receive. Not a cool fish? Very cool. Get a couple of nicer fish. Okay, now the tacos are secure. Let's see what else is out there. And one of the things that's really picked my interest over the last years has been this slow pitch fishing. Little tiny reel, man. This thing is like, it's got so much power, but it's so small. I think I slow pitched something. I did a little bit of homework on the net. I got some of the new pen slow pitch gear. I'm dying to try out. Talked to my boy Damon in Australia, got some tips on how to rig some of my favorite Nomad lures for slow pitch fishing. 
And next thing I know, I'm literally fishing one small jig at like 250, 300 feet of water. What you got? I would not be surprised if I had the same flavor as you're holding there. Another nice, nice chucklehead. Oh yeah, look at that one. That is like my first slow pitch fish. And it just makes things more fun to do it a different way. Congratulations. He ate, he ate that buffalo jig. Worked it just like Damon told me to. I'm really sold on the slow pitch. You know, do I think it's ever gonna replace bait or live bait? You know, probably not, but it's just another trick in our bag and another fun way to go catch a fish that you've already caught a million times. Look at this. There's a different species, huh? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is kind of like, this is the one we're usually after. You caught these before. It's a red vermilion. That's a good model right there too. Dude, they're eating this thing, I'm telling you. All I did was what the guys told me, turn the hook around, and they're jumping on that buffalo jig from Nomad. Jumped all over it, huh? I think the grocery list's looking pretty solid now. At least the protein portion of it. <laughs> I can handle the rest, I can buy that with money. It doesn't take skill. It's orange, you got the orange. I got the orange. Right flavor, nice vermilion, dude. Oh, Raj, look at this. This light rod is sick. This is the only way I want to rock fish now. This one's got like actual rock coloration on them. Little chucklehead. Yeah, all right, well, I think we checked the first, uh, first few off the list here. Got some good rock fish. Tomorrow we'll go catch a few lobsters. And then I think we'll do a big cookout at the house for all the boys. All right, get that thing in, let's roll. Let's get out of here. You know anything about catching lobsters? A little bit. So well, here they are. I just pulled them out, made sure we had 10. I've used them in a couple years. So we're gonna need to verify batteries. We need to sharpen the bait chopper, which you'll see why that's important later. One thing I really enjoy doing is catching species that are very similar to the species I catch back home, but they're different. They're in different states, they're in different countries, and they look different. Floats. Nets, the bucket, and that's it? Yeah, these are the cups too. So this is what we put the bait in. Okay. And then we clip these into the bottom of the net. It's got a screw on lid, and that's for sea lions. One of those species we were gonna target this time was the lobster fishery. We were gonna try some hoop netting, which is a totally different way than I've been accustomed to catching lobster. So it's just like any fishing. We've tweaked it over the years and over the years. Like the chop bait that we we're gonna show you, that was our biggest secret. Really? 15 years ago, nobody was doing it. Oh, dude, stuff. when it, when they're crawling and it's good, a salmon head works just as good. But the rest of the time, when it's not crazy good, it makes all the difference having that fresh chop bait. You know how much oil comes out of those oh, sardines. Yeah. I mean, that just lays a trail for you. You know, the species are are very similar. They're both spiny lobster. One is more of a warm water lobster, obviously the one we catch in Florida. The other one is the one they catch here in California, which is a colder water lobster. This is what we're gonna use to chop the bait. And being it's the first trip of the season, we want to sharpen it. Another fishery that I feel like our coast is really known for, and especially you know in the last decade or so with the emergence of the Chinese really buying a lot of our seafood is our California spiny lobster. I think we're good. They're good to eat. They've got about a six month season. It's a really relaxing way to do, you know, get out on the water and do something fun on a weeknight. This time of year, it gets dark at five o'clock. So you can be out there setting your traps at 4.30. You can pull hoops till nine o'clock and come away with some awesome lobsters, get to hang out with your boys. It's just a fun night on the water. First order of business is gonna be take all that bait we saved from yesterday. I got it in the box on ice and we're gonna start chopping that stuff up into the nastiest, mushy, grossest friggin' sand, or sardine stew you've ever seen. <laughs> Do about a half a bucket rush, or maybe a quarter, Get it. we'll get it chopped up a bit and then throw some more on top. All right. If we put too much in, it's hard for the chopper to... Chop. Choppy chop. Choppy, 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 choppy. You look like you're getting so much gratification out of that. I don't, come on, see, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, you sure you're not a serial, serial killer? I never said that, Rush. Uh, I'm sure you can envision how this goes. <laughs> Take it, hold it over the bucket. <sighs> why do I always do the, Why do I always do the grunt work? Because you're the grunt. <sighs> yeah. Come on, Rush. 
I want you to co-host in a TV show with me. <sighs> Across the road, one of them. Where are these going now? After I'm pack, gone. When you put it in, like pack it tight and then seal the. It's pretty then you set them in this bucket. That's full as you can get them. Yeah, it's pretty packed. Because it'll wash out fast otherwise. Whew, now the bottom of the bucket is getting a little Not stronger. As fresh. Not, oh, God, what is that? <laughs> I'm going to guess it's dead sardine. I can't reach my beer from here, Rush. This is terrible. You're not the only one suffering, buddy. Local knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats. Lead the way. Costa. See what's out there. Aftco. Any fish, any water. JL Audio. How we play. Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. Taco Marine. Troll the edge. Sat Fish. The science of being lucky. And by the saltwater angler, Key West. All right, Rutchie, so what we're gonna do is just set the nets up like we practiced. We're gonna just drop them every 100 feet, kind of in a straight line. I'll probably bend it in a little bit because I like that area over there. Right. Our method of take here, there's two ways you can do it. You either grab them with your hand and get in that cold ass water in the middle of winter, which that's not happening with me, or you learn to fish a hoop net. And what a hoop net is, is basically several hoops that come together. Now we use a hoop net called a conical, which sits flat on the bottom, and then it kind of comes up like a little volcano with an open top on it. Then just perfect, peel the line out just so it doesn't foul. Oh, let me get my foot out of there. You're never gonna make it in the Bering Sea. In the middle of that net, we place bait as an attractant. And in our case, it's chopped up sardines. Now we get to use 10 hoop nets per boat or five per person up to 10 max. So me and Rush fishing together, perfect. We can have the maximum number of nets. We go and we set those in a string in a particular area. For me, I've been doing it a long time and I've got different areas I fish at different times of the season based on the temperature of the water. What's the most you expect to catch in like one trap? One, two. Like what's what? the most ever or what's a good? Like what, what, do, you, what do you usually catch? three. Couple it's three. Really good. We drop a string of 10 pots, and then once we drop that last one, you know, it takes about a half hour to get them in the water. We'll hang out for about 15 minutes or so. We'll go back around and we'll pull the first one, and then we just work them all night until either you're tired, you're cold, or you got a limit. Got one. Bugs. Got Shorty. one. A bug and a crab. Look Looks short. He's a shorty. Looks well, short to short. me. Yep. Pretty cool looking though. Pretty much like yours, just all red, right? Just different coloration. But I mean, the build of them and everything. You pull these hoop nets up, and the key to this is to pull it up fast enough where the lobster aren't gonna jump out. You have to have tension, and you gotta pull them up straight up and down. This one feels a little heavier. It feels like it. They'll fool you too when they get the bug. Look at that one. I told you it felt heavier. Big old bug. Well, that's a big one? Yeah, good one. Come here, big girl. That guy looks like lobster salad. That's gonna be a keeper. <laughs> that one, not so much. That's a good one. That's a good bug. And I'd say it's an average bug for here, you know? Almost a quarter over. Dude, it's both boring. That's a big old tail for tail. that lobster. Not a lot me. of junk in the trunk. Hopefully we get a couple big ones. You know, commercial lobster fishing in Southern California is both a tradition and a big business. You know, our commercial lobster fishery is very well protected and our fishermen manage that fishery in partnership with Fish and Game, and it's kept it prolific for my whole life. I see tacos. Oh, look at there. I see we, tacos. We got another one. And another That's a one. keeper for sure. Looks like you'll be close. Oh, she'll be close. She wedged Don't herself. Don't break my lobster, Rush. She wedged herself in there. You know, and that same mind for mentality and size limits and all that applies to us as recreational lobster guys. And that's even been adopted down the beach from, you know, the Mexican fishermen all the way down in Abre Ojos. We're all using the same gauge, we're all chasing the same fish, and we're really trying to look out for its future. Now, is there a limit? Yeah, seven per person. Seven per day. That's a lot of that's lobsters. That's a lot of lobster. A lot of lobster. The biggest advantage of living next to the water, or living by the water, is being able to go out and harvest your own food. Dude, Look at that one. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Man. I want to. I don't think you need a gauge for that one. <laughs> Look at that. This one's definitely a keeper. Sure, but. Oh. No. Nope. See how it falls right in there? Yeah, that's a, as long as it touches, you're okay, but we don't keep them. Yeah, well, we're going to let this there. guy go. 
And then Lobzilla right here. That's a good one, huh? That's a nice one. They're really Three good pounds. With, you can't get them with one hand. I was going to say two and a half, three. Look at the legs, Is how fat good, they good are. Is that a good bug for your department? Oh, so, that would be big. You know, I'm super fortunate to get to travel all over the place for work. But like the old saying goes, there's no place like home. Man, that's a good one. That is a good bug. I mean, that's a, you know, like I said, you can probably expect one of them that size, two, three. And in this case, you know, I got my boys in from out of town. I'm here to show them a good time. It's the middle of winter time. Middle of winter means two things as far as being on the water. It means rockfish and lobster. We got to do both. We got a bunch of awesome, awesome groceries to bring back to the house. And now we're gonna prepare them and show these guys a great Southern California meal.